Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, they're going to put it on the screen. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life that I'm living right now in the flesh, I'm living that life by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. And so what I want to do today is share the secret to living the more than abundant life by teaching you the importance of dying to yourself. So here's point number one, if you're taking notes, and that is, and they all kind of relate, is abundant life only comes from knowing Christ. Abundant life only comes from knowing Christ. John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, I'm going to share something, and I'm going to put a twist on it that you may not have ever heard before, but listen to this. It says, the thief comes not but to steal, and the thief comes to kill, and the thief comes to destroy. So stop right there. So if you're dating somebody and one of those three things is happening, they're not the right one. They stealing from you. They killing your self-esteem. They destroying your credit. I'm talking to somebody right now. Let me get back over here. Stick with my script. Well, pastor, he needed a car. I'm talking to somebody right now. He needed a car. So I helped him get the car. No, you, you helped him ruin your credit. That's what you did. Anyway. Jesus says, watch this, church, I am come. Why did you come, Jesus? That they might have life. Why else did you come, Jesus? So that they might have this life, how, church? More abundantly. We're not just talking about a regular life. Regular people have that. Jesus said, I came that you have, might have the more than abundant life. Watch the amplified version of this verse. Watch this now. It says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Watch what Jesus says. He says, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till their life overflows. Now, I want you to notice something now. Watch this, church. Notice that there were no other connections to things or people that was mentioned by Jesus for you to have or experience the more than abundant life. He did not say, that verse did not say, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you a husband, to give you a wife, to give you a new job, to give you a raise, to give you a new car, to help you buy a house so that you can have the more than abundant life. He didn't say that. In other words, what I'm saying to you is Jesus did not connect other things or other people with us having the more than abundant life. And the problem is the moment we add any of those things as criteria to having the abundant life is the moment now you add false criteria to the abundant life equation. Because Jesus did not put any of that other stuff in the equation to have abundant life. He was the only equation to have an abundant life. And once we add false criteria to the abundant equation, like I'm going to call it, then guess what? We add what I call false expectations. Now the abundant life looks like stuff Jesus didn't say it was supposed to have. In other words, if the more than abundant life only comes through Christ, then anything outside of him that we believe will give us abundant life will eventually produce false expectations. And that's what we have in the church today. We have a church full of single people with false expectations because they think the abundant life includes stuff and people when the abundant life only, and I say only, includes Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, 
the moment you introduce other things to the abundant life equation. Because he said, I came that you may have life. He didn't say, I came to give you a car. I came to give you a house. I came to give you a husband. He didn't say that. But the moment you and I add those things to the equation, guess what's going to happen? We produce false expectations. And when false expectations happen, you know what happens after that? A sick heart. Proverbs 13, 12, they're going to put it on the screen. It says, hope that is deferred. It makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Listen to the voice translation. Hope that's postponed grieves the heart. But when a dream comes true, life is full and sweet. And this is why so many singles are what I'm going to call discontent. It's because their definition of contentment includes things that are not part of God's definition. Let's read now John 10.10. 10. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. He says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. It sounds like the only solution to abundant life that I just read is an experience with Jesus. And that's why, listen, church, you can obtain all the stuff you want in life and still fill a void. This is why people who have money have money, but they still commit suicide because they have a void. Money can't feel what Jesus can. Now, I know the church wants you, oh, it's just Jesus, 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 but Jesus can't touch me at night. He can if you want him to. He can touch your spirit that need to be cleaned out. That's what he can do. He can do that. But see, the moment it's, listen, the moment that is Jesus and is the moment you will have some level of disappointment. Listen to this. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, because the average single person has, has included in this equation of abundant life stuff that Jesus did not promise, and because of that, now they become discontent. And Paul knew the secret to, to contentment. Listen to Philippians chapter 4. Verse 10, I'm reading in the voice translation. It says, I could hardly contain my joy in the Lord when I realized you have started to show care for me once again. He says, since you have not had the opportunity to show how much you care until now, I want you to know how it touched me. Watch verse 11. I'm not saying this because I need something. He says, I've learned. I've learned to be what, church? Content. Notice contentment has to be learned. He said, but I learned to be content in whatever my circumstances are. He says, I know how to survive in tight situations. I know how to enjoy having plenty. In fact, I've learned how to face any circumstances. I've learned how to be fed or I've learned how to be hungry. I've learned how to have it and I've learned how to not have it. I'm going to add this. I've learned whether I'm married or whether I'm not married. I've learned that if I had a man, if I didn't have a man. I've learned if I had my car that I want or I don't have the call my he says I can be content in every and any situation and the only way that contentment is going to happen he said it is through the anointed one and his power the only way you're gonna have contentment that we're talking about is you got to know that Jesus is all you need and Jesus is all you got he said listen I've learned how to be content you know how I learned? He said, because I've learned because he has a relationship with the anointed one who gives him the power and the strength. So here's the